Hello and welcome to another episode here on Captain's Dry Dock. And in the Dry Dock today, I'm giving you my top five troubleshooting tips in regards to failed resin prints. Let's make it real. So unlike paper 2D printing, it's not the case of just pressing a button and everything works every single time. When it comes to resin and filament printing, it, there is a bit of an art to it and knowing what's what to be able to actually get a good result. And that's what this episode's about. First, the caveat. The following possible solutions are purely based on my own experiences operating resin printers for the last year. Some images included in this video are examples that are sourced from the internet and used to illustrate the issues being described, but they themselves may have resulted from an alternative issue not addressed in this video. Now, this is not done in any particular order, but at number one is resin not reacting to the UV light or you're getting mixed results. Resin is really temperamental and needs to have the ideal conditions to cure properly. 3D resin printing should be done ideally at room temperature. So if it's really, really cold, close those windows and eliminate any drafts. But that's not always possible because sometimes you might have a printer set up in the shed. And also, you may not be able to afford the astronomically high utility bills nowadays hello with my fucking money <laughs> but no threat here's a cheap and simple solution you can just place a cardboard box over the printer where it will create its own warm localized environment Oh, number two, sticky tacky prints. Now you might find that the surface of some of your prints have a tacky touch to them. It may be the case that it's uncured resin residue that's not either been completely cured by the UV light or it's not been washed off properly. So give it another dose of UV light or back to the bath and give it a good old wash. Oh, number three, supporting base is printed, but the model mass is stuck to the FET film like a fat, ugly blob. Out of all the issues, this is the one I encountered the most and took me ages to solve it, and this is how I did it. So you need to know about the theory. Like pulling a rubber sucker from the surface too quickly, it will create more suction, and then it will take more force to remove. The same effect happens during a print. This is where the supports can fail, but the printer continues to expose the UV light into the resin leaving that solidified mess in the vat for you to clean up as there's nothing pulling it up for the next layer and so that's what you're left with so try this go to the printer settings and decrease the extraction speed which will allow the print to slowly peel away from the fed film also increase the amount of supports to the model as well as the thickness as a default i only ever use the thicker supports no matter what i print so more is better than not enough just thinking about it hurts. Four, the FET film rips, creating an absolute mess and your resin gets all over your printer. Perhaps the worst situation to happen when resin printing as it takes so much time and effort to clean up, especially when the resin finds its way all the way through the seams and into the inner workings of your lovely printer. What happened? Are you okay? She slimed me. That's great! In this case, it's very likely that the FEP film was weakened due to damage from previous prints, such as a tiny little nick or a perforation. So, as the plate pulls upwards, peeling the model away, the model in turn will also pull up the film. And if the film is damaged, that will tear at that exact weak point and give you a really bad day. Now, although you can purchase LCD screen protectors for your printer, my advice is prevention is the better alternative. After every print, inspect that vat to see if there's any telltale signs of weakness and damage. And if so, just replace the FET film before it's too late. Okay, this doesn't happen all the time, but it's worth knowing anyway. At number five, the plate has a solidified mess on it, which is not the same shape as the design, and there's nothing in the vat either. If you're getting this strange resin mess left on the plate that doesn't even resemble the file that you sent to print, it may be due to a faulty LCD screen. Now that's the thing inside the machine that bombards the resin with UV light and sometimes that can break. You can test this by following the guidance of your printer and turning it on manually and checking the glass and seeing how it displays. If it is faulty and the printer is relatively new, you should be able to get this exchange or get a full refund. But if it's almost been a year, the manufacturer should be happy to exchange or send you a replacement part. 
Being the latter the case, a new LCD screen can easily be replaced by yourself and there's plenty of instructional YouTube videos online that will describe the process of your printer of how to actually put that LCD screen in. Number six, model stuck on the plate like a limpet. This is where the base does its job too well and takes a lot of effort and a scraper damaging that plate to remove the model from it. This can be due to having the bottom exposure time really, really high. Personally, I'd rather have this than the alternative of having a model dropping off into the vat mid-print. So I highly recommend fitting a magnetized panel. I've included a link in the descriptions down below. This makes popping off the model quick and easy. This modification is easily stuck onto the plate with a removable surface that can immediately be reattached and ready for the next print. No scraping required. Was any of that useful for you? If so, brilliant. If not, well, at least you know that we're all in the same boat when you have a 3D resin printer because fell prints seem to be the natural course of actually owning one. And when you do finally master it, which taken me about a year of 3D printing, then it's smooth sailing. It's really, really good and satisfying. But if you do have any other comments or additional things you want to add on to what makes a failed print fail that I've not covered, leave a comment down below and I'll be ever so grateful. But in the meantime, my name's John Child. I'm now getting good quality 3D resin prints and I'll see you on the next episode. You take care. <laughs>